For this video, we are going to be looking at the Kibbe body typing system as if we are the dressmaker. The Kibbe body typing method can be overwhelming at first when you're learning about it. I know that I experienced that and I've received some comments when I've talked about this before on my channel from people saying that they also explored this system and then became overwhelmed, threw their hands up and kind of walked away from it. I understand that and so my video here is going to be an attempt to try to provide another way into this method. So for a moment, imagine that you are one of the most talented dressmakers in the world and that individual clients come to you for custom, one-of-a-kind dresses or formal wear to go to certain high-profile events. They come to you to make something just for them that makes them feel fantastic and makes them feel like themselves. Because you are so experienced and so talented, you have learned to see your customers falling into five basic categories of body type. And these types are arranged initially by height. And you see it as having two tall types, two shorter types, and one type in the middle that's neither short nor tall. The tall types are dramatic and natural. The short types are gamine and romantic. And the moderate, neither tall nor short, is a classic. For each of these aesthetic category slides, I've chosen a home, a sculpture, a vase, and a font that I think represent the overall characteristics of this aesthetic category. The dramatic category is elongated and narrow, sleek and sharp. So if your customer walks into your shop and they appear to be pretty tall and somewhat narrow, you might immediately think that they might look good in the dramatic aesthetic category. Two celebrities who embody this particular aesthetic are Amal Clooney and Sofia Vergara. Both of these celebrities are considered dramatic types. Their lines are quite long and tall, and they are quite narrow. Even though Sofia Vergara is famous for her fabulous bust line, you can also see though that her hips do tend to be somewhat narrower in proportion to her bust line, and overall, she appears tall and narrow. You can see some sharpness in her elbows. If this customer comes into your shop, you might first think to try some of the dramatic aesthetic lines, which are long and sharp. Here are some photos of Amal Clooney out and about. On either end of the slide, we have her in a formal gown. In both cases, she is wearing a long dress that goes to the floor, and in each case, both the green dress and the gold dress, there are geometric details that provide a long striping effect. The green dress has straight vertical lines with quite a lot of structure and tailoring at the bodice, and the gold beaded dress has angular chevron details that provide kind of like an arrow tip pointing upward. And in both cases in these dresses, she's easily wearing these lines. She looks at home, she looks harmonious. These dresses are not overwhelming her frame. I included pictures of Amal's husband just to show that she is quite tall. If you see her in context with other people, she will appear to be a taller bodied person. In this cream colored dress, we see her looking fantastic with these tall, sharp black boots. She can handle a mostly monochrome outfit with extremely sharp, somewhat asymmetrical detailing. She looks very chic and very at home in these lines. Another example from the dramatic category is Angelica Houston. Here, Angelica seems to shine in these monochromatic gowns that are going all the way down to the floor. We see her in this very beautiful steel gray kind of flowy ensemble. And even though it's flowing, we can see that she has some sharp tailored details along the hips that create sort of flounces on the side, but otherwise pretty straight down to the floor. I think she looks great in this plum colored gown as well. We can see here, her dressmaker decided to include embellishments and those embellishments are large scale and they start at her shoulder, they follow the sharp line of her V-neck, come to her waist and then flow all the way down to the floor. 
Her red dress as well, although it includes some voluminous draping, we see a very sharp tailored detail around the waist and again, a very sharp angular neckline. She looks fantastic and I think it's harmonious with the lines in her face as well. They seem to be flattered by this kind of sharp V-neck line. Angelica Houston can also handle asymmetry. Here we see her proudly holding up her Oscar. She's wearing a one sleeve dress, the other sleeve is bare. She has her hair in a very sharp cut and the dress is monochromatic in one single solid color of green. This is a dress that might appear severe on another type of customer, but Angelica Houston appears to be tall and somewhat sharp and somewhat narrow, and so these monochromatic, long line, sharp details really help her beauty to sing. We also see her here in other suiting type dresses. These ones come a little bit higher up to her knee, but not above the knee. They're not putting Angelica in a short skirt. These skirts are longer in line, emphasizing her long line, and we see these crisp, sharp details. She looks, I think, fantastic. So if you're listening to this type and you're thinking, no, this can't be me because I'm not tall, there are dramatics who are not overtly tall but are more moderate in height. A dramatic will never be short, but a dramatic can be more moderate to tall. A perfect example of a more moderately height dramatic is Barbara Streisand. If you do wind up going down this rabbit hole, Barbara Streisand is considered more of a soft dramatic, but she is a dramatic. These are some images of Barbara from earlier in her life. And we see when Barbara was a newer celebrity, she was often placed in menswear details. We see her in a beautiful blouse over kind of a heavy, looks like tweed skirt. It looks very long and tailored. We also see her there in the middle in a full suit with a collar and tie vest, longer skirt to the knee. I love how they styled her hair in that long, sharp angle as well. It suits her angular features beautifully. You can see also with her eye makeup, they've elongated her eye into a soft cat eye to enhance her angular features, and it looks really beautiful to me. We see her in a casual traveling outfit with the choker. She's wearing a long line with a kind of a heavier weight jacket. The jacket has crisp, sharp details. It is a single color, and it looks somewhat sturdy, and she's having no problem carrying that jacket. It looks great on her. We also have her here in a kind of 40s inspired suit that's a little bit softer than the other items, but it still is long, it shows high contrast, and there isn't a lot of like frilly detail, and it's not ornate. She's handling this sort of serious, heavy, long lined suit beautifully. She looks very at home, it looks like it fits her perfectly. Barbara is reportedly five foot four, so although she is not tall, she is moderate, and she can handle an elongated line. So here Barbara is in outfits that include a headpiece that is coordinating with the outfit. Barbara can handle a full monochrome outfit as well as a very bold geometric print. We see her here in bold horizontal stripes with this tall hat to go with it and we see her in head-to-toe geometric zigzagging details. And again, she can handle all of this. There is sharpness and angularity in her overall look that can handle those dramatic lines. Barbara looks fantastic in these tailored, geometric, simple, clean lines. They really show off her special beauty. Jamie Lee Curtis is also considered a dramatic. Jamie overall has a tall look. She does have a curvaceous figure, although her hips, again, are on the narrower side. She looks great in clean, simple lines. Jamie can also handle this crisp haircut, a crisp, short haircut, and she can handle graphic, bold, heavy glasses. They're not overwhelming to her. They seem at home on her. Here we see her in a couple of different garments that are really very simple. The lines are clean and simple. Jamie looks fantastic in jackets. She looks really good in all black in monochrome. These aviators are sharp and strong and provide high contrast 
to her hair and skin and they sort of show off, I think, her crisp, narrow lines. Jamie looks really great in monochrome and high contrast. Here we see her in a black and white ensemble that really shows off her fabulous figure. And you'll see that she's got this sharp angular neckline again and a dress that goes to the floor. It's puddling on the floor. She looks fantastic in this monochrome, ultra clean, minimalist white dress with a sharp shoe detail and she is giving me everything I've ever wanted in this tan monochromatic suit. Again, you can see the leg type here is long and goes to the floor with just a sharp shoe pointing out. Her shoulders are quite sharp and you can see that the way the single button works, it's providing a long line. These are just some examples. I'm not necessarily saying that every one of these items would look good on a dramatic, but if you think this might be the aesthetic category that fits your particular body, these might be the types of things you want to try for yourself. So now we're back in our dress shop and our next appointment arrives through the door and the person who walks in the door is much shorter than the previous customer. Now we have someone who is moderate to quite petite and curvy both in the bust and in the hips. The romantic aesthetic category is going to be characterized by having ornate detailing, emphasis on curves and accommodating curves, as well as an overall mature sort of sexier vibe. Eartha Kitt was flattered by wearing ornate detailing. We see her here in this animal print outfit that includes fur detailing at the neck and at the wrist. We can also see with this white dress that although it is a floor length dress, they have made sure to show her ankle. This is true as well with the animal print. The romantic body type, because it is more petite, can be somewhat overwhelmed by a large vertical line. And you'll see often with the romantic type that the ankle will be shown with often a small dainty shoe and sometimes that shoe will have an ankle detail as well. Selma Hayek is a romantic type. When we see her body, one of the first things we do see is her curve dominant frame. She is quite short and quite curvy. We see it here with this delicate silk blouse that is sheer and see-through. She has further emphasized her waist by putting a belt over this blouse. You can see here if you compare the two pants types, in one case it is cut at the ankle showing her shoe and the other is quite long to the floor. Although she looks beautiful in both, I do think that she is flattered when she shows her ankle and her shoe. In the skirt outfit we see her flattered with a jeweled collar, a bit of a flouncy fuller skirt, and again, a shoe that emphasizes her ankle. In a more casual context, Salma Hayek can be seen here wearing jeans, and in both of these cases, she's emphasizing her waist with a strong belt, and she's rolling up the hem to give herself a little bit of a shorter line and to then highlight her ankle, either with this little sandal or with an ankle booty. You can see she's also shortening her line on her sleeve by rolling up her collar to give more of a three-quarter length kind of bracelet sleeve look, both with her blazer and her shirt. We see this as well with her skirt outfits. She looks really great in a full skirt. These skirts don't go too much past her knee. They aren't that long, but they do provide waist emphasis and a little bit of volume. And again, we see her ankles emphasized. Oprah Winfrey is also a romantic type. Oprah looks fantastic when her curves are accommodated, when her waist is emphasized, and again, where we see some amount of detailing. Even though Oprah's outfits here are somewhat more monochrome and not overly embellished, especially here in this orange top, we can see the draping and the way the sleeves are shortened help accommodate her romantic shorter lines. In more formal occasions when Oprah is wearing a dress, you can see her dressmakers here have chosen details that flatter her double curve and her waistline. We see ruching, we see waist emphasis. 
In this burgundy dress, we see ornate lace detailing. In the cream colored dress, we see an ornate flouncing kind of draped detail as well. If you think this might be the aesthetic category that would work for you, here are some things I saw on the Saks app that I thought might flatter somebody with these types of lines. It's time for your next appointment. And this time, the next customer who comes in through your door is another taller type but this particular customer doesn't seem to have the same sharpness in feature as your dramatic type customer. This customer appears somewhat more relaxed and maybe a little more athletic. We have an example of a customer who might be flattered by the natural aesthetic. The customer who is flattered by this aesthetic category is going to be moderate to taller and somewhat stronger. They are going to be flattered more by free-flowing, relaxed lines versus crisply, sharply tailored lines. They are going to be flattered by textural elements and somewhat broader, more draped elements. This customer may look good in prints, but it's better if those prints are less geometric and less easy to discern in a single glance. They may look more painterly and free form. Princess Diana was considered a natural. She was quite tall, I think around 5'10". Her shoulders seemed somewhat broad and somewhat strong. They were one of the features you could see right away. And when her dressmakers emphasized her shoulder lines, I think she was beautifully flattered. She also did well with long to the floor dresses, especially when they had some sort of flowing detail. She looked great in casual and athletic wear. She really seemed to shine when her clothes gave a little bit of a relaxed vibe versus that sharp tailored vibe. Ally McGraw is also considered to be in the natural category. Here are some pictures of her from different phases of her life. We can see that her facial features are somewhat wider versus narrow. She has, there's some broadness in her cheekbones. We also see her in a more recent photo wearing a garment that is not tailored. It is natural looking, it is quite draped. The fabric seems kind of thicker and heavier and she's wearing a very large necklace. This is a large, chunky, kind of irregular handmade, it looks, necklace. And her hair is pulled up in a messy bun and she looks radiant. This looks absolutely perfect on Ally McGraw. Ally McGraw has been a style icon her whole life and we see her easily handling this very long, heavy coat to the floor. We see her wearing what looks like sort of corduroy bell bottoms maybe. She can handle these heavier fabrics. She doesn't need the delicate lace to shine. She can handle those thicker, warmer looking fabrics. Cindy Crawford is also a natural and she's quite tall. Cindy Crawford is famous for having been a supermodel in the 90s, and in fact, a lot of the 90s supermodels were naturals as well. You can see Cindy in the middle and in the red suit wearing clothes that wouldn't necessarily be in that natural aesthetic category. And wearing these particular clothes with her frame, they really emphasize how kind of strong and athletic Cindy Crawford looks. I really like these pictures of Cindy in a more casual context. You can see her looking very comfortable in light wash denim. This is not crisp, sharply tailored denim. This is easy wear, kind of easy rinse, light blue denim. With shirts that have some detail, there's a collar here, but these aren't crisp linen tailored shirts. These are soft knit shirts that are providing some draping over her body. That looks really great on natural, something that isn't quite so tailored. First Lady Michelle Obama is also considered a natural. If you think about one of the features that is most memorable about Michelle Obama, we remember that she is quite tall. We remember that she had very toned, fit arms. We see Michelle Obama looking fantastic in this flowing dress. And even in this jumpsuit that she's wearing, we see that it has a wide boat neck that helps accommodate and highlight her beautiful shoulders. And we can see that they've added some fringe detail to create a little bit of movement, which I think is a hallmark of the natural aesthetic. Now, even if you're not tall, you may still be a natural. This is a category for moderate height, you know, 5'4 or so, to a taller type. 
Jennifer Lopez is a good example of someone who's in the more moderate height category who's a natural. Jennifer Lopez looks fantastic when her hair is a little bit loose and she seems somewhat at ease and in a bit of a flow state. And these are some pictures that I think highlight that. If you think this might be your category, here are some outfits I saw on the Saks app that I think would look great on somebody who is aligned with this natural aesthetic category. Back at the shop, it's a busy day and we have two more client appointments. Our next client walks in the door and we have another short type client in enters the gamine. This distinct aesthetic category can be recognized through color blocking, animated graphical prints, stripes and other geometric patterns. One of the most famous examples of this category is the 1960s model Twiggy. Twiggy was a somewhat tall version of the gamine type, but she was flattered by geometrical prints. Here we see her in a sideways vertical striping, something that style experts will often tell you to avoid. But if you have the type of body that is aligned with this aesthetic category, you may find you love to wear horizontal stripes. Another style icon who embodies this particular aesthetic is the Icelandic musician Björk. I think I'm saying that right. Björk is known for wearing highly vibrant and animated outfits. She can handle these you know cuts into the vertical line as with this red dress although this red dress is a long red monochrome dress the uh, sheer detailing on the top with the bra underneath creates a sharp vertical break in the eye and the high contrast shoe that goes along with her hair creates some almost like vertical striping she can handle short haircuts and you know kind of quirky braiding details as well as overtly messy hair. She can handle all of that without it overwhelming her features or taking away from her overall looks. One of the hallmarks of this aesthetic type is that the person who falls into this category will always look youthful no matter where they are in life. They will always retain some of that kind of youthful, almost teenage quality and anything that helps to align with that particular vibe is flattering on this type. Here we see Bjork in a couple of different dresses. Here performing, she's wearing a shorter hemline dress with a bold graphical pattern on it. And in the pink tulle dress, she's able to handle an unusual sculptural form that goes out in a horizontal way. And we also see on the bodice of her dress, there's another graphical print here, and her shoes are in sharp contrast to the pink of her dress. None of this is overwhelming her. This is the type of dress that would be very hard for a lot of people to wear, but Bjork, because of her shorter stature, her straighter frame, and her youthful look, this looks right at home with her. This level of animation and sculptural detail looks great on Bjork. Holly Berry is also a gamine. She is considered a soft gamine, but she's a gamine. And what this means is that Holly Berry is flattered by short hemlines. Holly can handle a very, very short hemline. She can handle bold graphic prints, geometric prints. She can handle having her vertical line broken in this um, zigzag two-piece dress from, I think, the 90s. It's in two pieces. We see her vertical line broken up in at least four or five different places. When a longer dress is needed, we can see Holly Berry's dressmakers have opted for breaking up her vertical line either through the contrast in the dress with the black and the gold. We can see that they've used contrasting fabrics to create a zigzagging detail that creates animation and vertical line breakage. This keeps her from looking too overwhelmed. Off-duty, Holly Berry looks great when she's either wearing a short hemline or a cropped jacket. If you're watching this and you're in the shorter category but you haven't seen a celebrity yet who sort of looks a lot like you, I present Mindy Kaling. Although you might think of Mindy Kaling as having some more curves, her form is actually quite a bit straight and Mindy does have that, I think, youthful gamine sort of energy. And Mindy is very flattered by color blocking, vibrant prints, 
bold stripes. It helps to energize Mindy. She looks really, really great in that dopamine dressing bright colors and she can really handle a short skirt. I just love her in this pastel Chanel suit. Here we have Mindy in a couple of formal dresses. I really like Mindy in this yellow and white dress. We can see that it creates some color blocking for her. I think she looks fantastic in these vibrant animated colors. We see her here in these black dresses and I think that they've accommodated some of her gamine lines by having this you know, giant black bow on the long dress and the you know, ankle emphasis on the other, but I don't think either of these black dresses is as flattering of Mindy's special authentic style as this bright color blocked dress is. That's my opinion. If you think this style category might be one that you want to try, here are a couple of options I saw at the Saks app. We have a fabulous short Valentino dress and a couple of other sort of outfits that embody that gamine aesthetic. We have bold, animated, vibrant prints. We have short hemlines and we have shoes that cut off the vertical line. If you like to play it a little more subdued, here are some black and white elements. This high contrast black and white look is really great for the gamine. Your last customer of the day may be the easiest or the hardest, depending on your eye. The classic type is of moderate height. This is going to be a customer who is neither tall nor short. And the classic aesthetic vibe is characterized by symmetry and balance and it's a restraint when it comes to ornate detailing. Grace Kelly is considered a classic because she's quite moderate. To look at her body, she is neither tall nor short. She is neither curvy nor straight. Her bust and hips are proportionate to one another. She has a slight hourglass shape, but she's not overtly and dominantly hourglass. It's not the first thing you notice about her, but she does have a waist and will look great in waist emphasis. A classic can be easily overwhelmed by too much detailing. A classic is usually flattered through subtle, simple, well-tailored details, not as sharp as a dramatic and not as embellished as a romantic. Meryl Streep is another example of a classic. When we think of Meryl Streep, it's hard to put a pin on exactly what is her most prominent feature. She sort of just looks like herself. You wouldn't say necessarily that she's very tall or very short, or that she's known for having any one particular feature that stands out more than any other. And she is often flattered through simple clothes with not a lot of detailing. I was excited to find these two pictures. This is a picture of Meryl Streep wearing the very same blouse many decades apart. And in the earlier photo of her, they've styled her with a very simple gold chain. And in the more recent photo, they've given her a big, bulky, heavy, wooden beaded necklace. I personally don't think that heavy beaded necklace is an improvement on the fine gold chain. I actually think the fine gold chain highlights the parts of her that are delicate. And I think the heavy beaded necklace is somewhat distracting. It draws my eye. I'm more likely to look at that necklace than I am to look at her face. But in the picture with the fine gold chain, I look right at her face. If you personally find yourself to be easily overwhelmed by prints and details and bold necklaces, if you feel like those types of things are wearing you, you might be a classic. Classics tend to look the best when their clothes are somewhat moderate. They look great in tailored detailing, but usually when there's a balance between the sharpness and the softness. Any amount of detailing will show up. Even a small level of detailing will look quite prominent on a classic. A classic can certainly wear prints, but those prints, as in the dress that Meryl is wearing here, they're best when they are not sharply contrasted or animated, that they're not too large, not too small, and they're readily discernible as with this dress. We can see her in this white and black pants ensemble. She is able to wear some detailing here, but it's quite minimal and quite easy to read right away. Lucy Liu is also an example of a classic. She's considered to be a dramatic classic because there's some sharpness in her lines, but she's a classic. We can see Lucy Liu here flattered by these simple clean lines. 
the hemlines are coming to her knee and the overall lines of these garments are very moderate, clean and simple, classic looking and she's flattered by these. In this slide we see Lucy Liu wearing garments from three different aesthetic categories, gamming, classic and romantic. In the classic lines in the middle we have her with a moderate length dress, very simple clean lines with minimal detailing. We also see her here in some gamming style. We've got two colors, so we've got color blocking going on. We have some sculptural dimension. It's something that I think would maybe look better on Bjork than it would on Lucy Liu. We also see her in a more romantic leaning item with the large volume, heavy detailed flouncy sort of top. Although she looks great, I don't think it's a better look for her than the very simple clean lines of the classic look. Tina Fey is also considered to be a classic. Classics look great in waist emphasis, and here we see her in this floral print dress. Again, the floral print is readily discernible. It's neither very large nor very small, and they provided her with waist emphasis. The classic is considered more symmetrical, and so defining the waist and dividing the body into two halves seems to look really good on this type. We see her in a hemline here that is moderate, just right at the knee. She looks great. We can also note that Tina Fey's body structure is neither extremely curvy nor very straight. Although Tina Fey is not overtly curvy, she does have hips and a bust and is very flattered when you do emphasize her waist. Here she looks fantastic in a jacket and ankle pants outfit with very simple pumps. Although the jacket is made of a shiny material, it's otherwise very simple in detail. You see there's like a sharp line at the pocket. That's really all she has for detail there. Here she is in a column gown for a fancy event, and we see, again, minimal detailing. The band at the top at her neckline creates a bit of a sharp point, although it is not overtly sharp like we saw with the dramatics. And there's you know some amount of, I think it's brocade or some kind of detailing, but it's not sharply contrasted. And in terms of her jewelry, we have simple drop earrings and a very moderate purse. They have not loaded Tina Fey down with a really heavy necklace, and I think she looks great. This slide is meant to show that a classic can very quickly appear not to be put together. We have Tina Fey in the middle in a well-tailored dress with some nice sharp details, moderate length, she's looking great. And on either side, we have some street style images of her in more casual clothes. On the left, she's got a sweatshirt and a long coat on with some jeans. This might look fantastic on a natural, but Tina Fey doesn't necessarily look her best in this deconstructed sort of casual look. A classic will often look their best in simple, tailored, moderate clothing. Even relatively restrained, moderate detailing on a classic will be immediately apparent. Here we see Tina in dresses that have some detail and we have some waist emphasis and some moderate flouncing at the bust line and I think it's just automatically obvious that she's wearing a little bit of like a lacier detail. In this navy blue dress we see her wearing sequins but they've been moderated. We have you know, a monochrome dress. Both materials are navy blue and the amount of sequins has been restrained down to just a detail. Here we see Tina Fey with her friend Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler is considered a gamine. Tina Fey next to Amy does look a bit taller. We can see Amy's really wearing some high heels, but Tina Fey does still seem to appear a little bit taller, but not very tall. And even in this lace detail, the lace really does stand out as being a detail on Tina Fey, even though it has been restrained and otherwise the lines of the dress are moderated and calmed down. Just for fun, this is a comparison image of Holly Berry and Tina Fey in a very similar dress. Tina Fey and Holly Berry are reportedly the same height, but they fall into two different categories. The differences between them are so minor, your eye has to be trained to see it but Holly Berry does have a bit of that like youthful teenage vibe, and her shoulders are a little bit broader than her hips, creating more of a T-shaped silhouette, whereas Tina Fey does look sort of just like an adult and has her shoulders and her hips appear to be like proportionately balanced. Both look great in this 
strapless column gown. Holly Berry's gamine nature has been accommodated here with high contrast. With our dressmaker hat on, you may choose a very similar dress for two different customers and then customize these details to flatter their own unique style. If you think you might fall into this aesthetic category, I just pulled some clothes from the Saks app that I thought might look great on somebody who falls into the classic category. I know that was a lot of information. Please feel free to go back and watch any part of this video that you need to see again. Next week, I'm going to post a video of me trying on clothing types from each of these aesthetic categories. So I'm going to be showing how these aesthetic categories work on my body and I'm going to show how trying on clothes from these categories can help you pinpoint if you fall into this category or not and that can help you make better choices when you're out buying clothes. It can also help you to bring new life into the clothes you already have by mixing them up in a different way. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you found this information useful, please also consider giving it a like. Anyway, I hope you have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.